Hello everyone, my name is Henry, and welcome to another episode of Adobe Extension Showcase, or Add-ons Showcase. I screwed up the title. Great start. So this is a pretty cool episode. Today we're going to be taking a look at Swatchoos, which is from a company called Moon Gorilla. Most awesome name ever. They're from Poland. Pretty awesome people. They've made another extension you may or may not have heard of. I haven't featured it. I will feature it probably next week as far as I'm concerned. Or maybe even before that. I'm not quite sure. Uh, but they're based in Poland. Pretty cool people. And uh, Swatchoos is currently in beta. So it was released uh, in late September. So I'm down here now. Re or not down here. I'm still where I've always been. Uh, but I'm here reviewing it for you guys. Uh, or not reviewing it, but showcasing it. Whatever. It's a review slash showcase. That's what I've always said, and I'm going to keep on saying that. I just like the title showcase, because really, I don't go in-depth in terms of you. I just kind of showcase them. So, Swatchers is probably one of the cooler extensions, and I have a lot to talk about with it, because there's a lot of stuff I'm happy with. And that's also one of the things I like doing with these showcase series, is sort of aim them a little bit at developers as well, so they know what they should, in at least my personal opinion. Sorry about bumping the mic. Why did I bump the mic? So the developers also know what they should be going for to please their customers. Now, of course, I'm just one customer, but I at least like to think that my thoughts are at least the same of some users. And I, I, I generally think most of the things I talk about is uh, stuff that just should be the case. But then again, I could be biased. So guys, tell me in the comments if there's anything that you think I always never think about because I... Because my vision is clouded, maybe something's easier for me than it is for you. So, you know, we'll see about that. Um, pricing is always a thing I try to focus on, like whether or not that's one of the things with this. I try to focus mainly on paid extensions because that's what people need. If something's free, people are going to download it. If you pay for it, then, you know, you, you, you have a little bit of a harder time buying it. So having someone talk about it and tell you if it's worth it or not is pretty useful. So Swatchu's pretty nice icon already. Matches the rest of the Photoshop interface already from the icon. I know that's a really weird thing to mention and quirk about, but, uh, you know, making this fit in the Photoshop, especially considering how it's meant to be a replacement for the, uh, for some reason, I don't actually have it open. Uh, that's weird. Let's go ahead and get it open. Uh, I do believe I have it. No, I don't have it marked. Weird. Anyway, swatches. Uh, there's a classic swatches banner, right? Let's go ahead and put that along with the extension itself. Um... That's not what I wanted to do. There we go, swatches. So this thing is basically going to be a replacement for your swatches panel. So, you know, it's it, 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 that if fact that it has an icon that makes it look like a native Photoshop thing is, in my opinion, pretty important. So let's go and open it. And we've got this, um, first of all, we've got this basic interface to begin with. So I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so you guys can easily see it on my screen here. Yeah. I swallowed my own word there. Um... So what we'll notice here is we've got a pretty interesting interface compared to the normal swatches panel, which is just literally a bunch of swatches. We've even got remnants of uh, color lifter, which was the last review right there. I'm going to go actually go ahead and uh, reset my swatches here. Let's go and color swatches with the default colors. Uh, okay. Uh, don't save. There we go. So now those have been reset. Doesn't really matter. The, the swatch use works separately from your normal colors so it's got the default your normal swatches so it's got the default colors the ones that are defaults you've got grayscale you've got background which is actually the colors you've used in your image so far so if i go ahead and i make a box and i make it this yellow color that i've selected uh, and then i head into swatches again and then i press this button down here or no, I mean these, uh, where is it? yeah, it's this one. Press that. Uh, yes. And boom, it's now grabbed that yellow color from that particular layer into the background group. Now, the background group itself was created automatically the second I opened this document from the base layer. So you could alternately, if you have a lot of different colors in each layer, like you have a set, uh, as one layer with all the text in, which is normal, and then you have separate colors for all the different text elements. And then you'll like have a layer on top of that with images on it or like some graphical elements with colors. Then you can also have a separate swatch for that. So you easily have control over the different layers, swatches. That's a definite advancement over the normal swatches. 
where you kind of have to look a little bit to find the correct swatch and kind of experiment or just use the color picker, which while that is efficient, using swatches is a lot better. Um, we've also got, I'm not sure if this flat UI color thing is something I've added or if it was here where it came with the extension. Uh, so I don't know, but this was something I made to test. Uh, I just made a new group called Hello World, and then I added these random colors. Um, we also got this untitled group, another test. Uh, so again, it, it feels like a very familiar panel, like, say, deleting this group, just press the garbage can, which has the same icon as the garbage can down here, and you've simply removed it. Uh, here we've got another background from an earlier document. I'm going to go ahead and remove that as well, because it's so easy to just remove these things. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at sorting. Um, so... Let's go ahead and actually go ahead and, um, let's go ahead and actually go ahead, really. Um, let's go ahead and actually kind of just draw a little bit on this. Uh, let's remove that layer because I'm not using it anymore. Yes, and then uh, unlock this layer. Let's go ahead and draw a little bit with that. Switch to colors, draw a little bit with that. And then change the color to some other color. Draw a little bit more, like with some black. Basically, this is random drawing. I'm a photographer and I'm drawing in Photoshop. That is so not right, but uh, whatever. There we go. Draw some more. There we go. So now we've got quite a set of colors. I'm going to go ahead and choose a couple more. Just, you know, set it in there just so we have a couple of colors. Colors. Sorry if you can hear opening of doors. That will be my the other people living in this apartment. Okay, there we go. So, Let's go ahead and make a new group. Um, or actually, I can probably, yeah, let's make a new group and we'll call it. Yeah, so we need to double click it to rename it and then we'll call it um, my awesome swatch group. It's a really long name and I think I've already wrong. No, I did get it right, though, because I do care. I'm going to write uppercase G. There we go. Uh, and then another nice note is you can actually double click the uh, that and you'll get up the native color picker. Color picker. Now, personally, when a program wants to use the native color picker, I always use Scala Color, a free color picker for Mac OS X. So if you want to use that, then you add download it. I'll probably leave a link in the description if I remember it. If not, it's a simple Google search. Uh, the primary reason I like this is because it's about hex colors. Like the basic Apple ones, none of them have hex. It, it's stupid. It's not meant for the signers, I guess. <laughs> so let's go ahead and choose like, um. so like what's the general of these colors? So, so, so there's mainly green, there's one blue, so let's choose like a blue color, like a really light blue color. Just for the sake of showcasing this. So here we go. It's a pretty nice color. Close it and boom, that color is now the icon right there. So that's pretty cool. So now let's go ahead and choose the um, import selected layers as swatches. So you, again, as it said there, if you make another layer, color a little bit more on that and then you choose several layers using the shift key it'll import them all at the same time so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, press that button it's gonna load it for a little bit and then we're gonna select import torches to current selected group which is of course the one you've put your thing on and as you can see it put in all the colors it for some reason it added the three whites I'm assuming that has to do with some of these empty gaps now to fix that I'm just gonna go ahead and remove two of them. Um, so a couple of things you can do once you've got swatches is you can use shift to select them all or the regular command. Like if you've used Photoshop, you know how to use command and shift to efficiency your workflow, I guess, but uh, you never know. And then we can choose uh, to um, lighten up the color of each of these or also decrease it. So we can basically make them either darker or lighter colors um, than the ones they already are. So we can easily modify our swatches. So say we've made a design, we kind of like it, but then we realize, and then we go to the client and they're like, no, I want all my, these colors to be a little bit of a darker shade in each of them. And you're like, okay, just enter swatch shoes, press the darker or in the reverse case, lighter button. Boom, you're done. No need to go into this panel and uh, do it manually for each one of them. Because there's no fancy button for doing it there, is there? No. So in other words, way better. Um, you can also arrange them. So let's say we sort colors from lighter to darker. Boom. Now we've got that. And then we can sort colors from lighter to darkener. Or darker. Or is it darkener? Darkener. 
Hmm, weird. What's the difference? Oh, from lightner to darkner. And then from... I think they've screwed up the tooltips. I believe this one is supposed to be sort from darker or darkner. It should be darker, shouldn't it? Yeah, but this is in beta. So maybe they'll fix that right after this video is uploaded. I don't know. But it seems like they copy pasted some tooltips and forgot to fix it. But it seems like it should be the first one is sort colors from lighter to darker. And then the second one is sort colors from darker to lighter. Uh, and then we also can also display. Okay, I'll get back to that. So let's go ahead and take it from darker, uh, which I've already done apparently. Um, now what we can actually do here just to show this is a little bit cool is if we now up the light on this and then do this again the white one jumps up first pretty cool um, now a couple more things we can do here is we select select uh, these two are yeah okay so what we can also do is we can select a swatch and then we can go ahead and we can change it so we can enter in a random color value so I'm gonna just Write in a random hex value. Press enter. Oh, I forgot it. Damn it. 232323. Two, three, two, three. Enter. Boom. Now I've got a new swatch, and then I can just drop that into this swatch. And I'm just going to remove that old drop. Rip. So you can basically create swatches. And if you press this, you can change it to RGB values. So if you want to work with RGB, you can do that, or you can work with hex values. It's kind of up to you at this point. Um, this is the button you press for Kirk Bruce. I'm pretty sure I've already shown that. Uh, you can also duplicate the selected swatches, so you can make another group in case you want to use the exact same swatches in two different groups. Uh, and then if you press this menu, there's a lot of things you can do here as well. So you can load up the presets, which is flat UI, color wheel, default colors for me at least. Uh, you can go and open, which basically just allows you to open basically the old school Adobe, or not old school, but just normal Adobe Swatch files and save your current swatches as Adobe Swatch files. And you can save the selected group as a Swatch file. Um, you can also see here, there's a lot of different pages. So we're currently at the Swatches page, which is the one you're normally gonna be on. Then we've got the license page, which I'm not gonna head to, because that's basically information about your registration, because this extension does cost money. Um, uh, you can also head to the uh, you can also head to the settings page, which is where we're going to go now. And there's a couple of interesting settings you can do here. You can change the size of the swatches from small, medium to big. You can also choose how round they're going to be. I kind of like them when they're like this sort of not completely squarey. And you can also add borders to them to make them easily separable. I don't see the need for the borders. So I haven't turned it off. And then we can also have these options here, like sort imported colors by luminosity. And uh, that is another spelling error, I believe. Lum -e yeah, luminosity. Should be luminosity. They've, they've written it right in the tooltip, so it's just one of those weird things they haven't... Yeah, it's just one of those things that just went past them. It's still in beta. Once again, this is in beta. I can't stress it enough. When something's in beta, it means it isn't perfect, or at least it's not sort of... Um, what you'd call a full-scale product, which is probably why it's a little bit cheaper now, I believe. They may increase the price later on. Uh, enable alert when loading colors to active group and allow sending anonymous usage statistics, basically whether or not you want to send them information when the extension crashes and similar, or just how you use it to learn better how to use the user interface and similar. And then of course, as with every settings page, we have the lovely reset to default, which basically puts everything back to how it was when you installed the extension. Uh, and then got the about page, which um, basically just gives you a link to the website uh, along with uh, contact information and copyright Moon Gorilla Team. Then we can go ahead and also do the help, which I'm actually pretty surprised about this. So this basically opens up this entirely separate window. Um, this entirely separate modal dialog with pretty cool documentation for the entire sanctions with these animated GIFs and you know, this is, uh, I gotta admit, this is pretty impressive. Uh, they've basically loaded in the entire documentation into the extension. Uh, I'm not gonna read through this entire thing, but uh, if this, this tutorial again, this extension showcase is just supposed to show you the basics of an extension and tell you whether or not I recommend it. So if you're buying this, then of course you can use this. 
And it should be noted, it does have a trial. Um, as it says here, you have 14 days until I have to purchase a license. So, yeah. Um, it's got a lot of um, sort of... It's even got a list of keyboard shortcuts. It's it's really nice. I, I like... Um, I, I, I approve of this way of documentation. Most extensions give you some stupid PDF document or similar. This actually gives you the documentation inside the extension, which means you don't have to look for it. Now... The last thing I want to talk about, which I mentioned at the beginning, which I was pretty impressed about, this extension uses Spectrum, the Spectrum UI. For those who didn't know, when Photoshop, like about last release, not last release, but release before CC 2015.5, which is worse now, mom, now, they reached, they changed the design of Photoshop, so it looks like what it looks like right here. Now, most people are okay with this design, and apparently more Adobe programs are following after, apparently Illustrator is one of them. Uh, but probably more as well. They haven't given much information about when or what programs, but, you know, Adobe is Adobe. Um, but the um, Spectrum UI is basically the, what this new look to Adobe programs are. And what's cool is what shoes actually uses this, uh, uses that, uh, that design, or though that you actually looks like Spectrum, which again, plays in with it matching the application. I'm so tired of seeing extensions using some, like, either completely designing their own look or using some weird design elements that just don't fit with the application. It annoys me so much, so I'm happy to see something different for a change where they've actually done quite a lot of work to make it match the actual application it's running in, the host application as it's referred to. So that's really cool. Definite kudos to them. High quality is basically what I'm saying here. They've put a lot of effort into making this as good of an experience as it can be. Again, I am sure they will fix those copy-paste issues up here and all the other issues I mentioned, and there's probably more to find, and I'm sure they'll fix them. It's still in beta. Now, because I'm a bit stupid, uh, I'm going to go to the website using this link because I actually was stupid enough to forget the price. Um... Um, okay, I'm gonna have to actually click here then, I guess. Yes, there was actually an information about it. It is 33% off, or you pay 33% less while this is still in beta. So if you want to get it cheaper, head over there now and buy it, because that is cheaper than it will ever be, I hope. Um, yeah, so it's basically, right now it's $18. I reckon it's gonna be about, like, 20-something dollars when it's out of beta. So yeah, pretty good deal really for basically your new swatch. Like if you decide to buy this, this is almost guaranteed to be your new swatch panel that replaces the entire swatches because it's tenfold better than, you know, this piece of crap. All right, let's submit it. This thing kind of just kicks this thing out. Like I'm just going to close that. Goodbye. Don't want to see you ever again. Uh, another thing that I forgot to mention before I end this video, um, you can also disable compact mode, which means it'll act more like the original swatches panel and removes the groups. Now, I really recommend you just keep it in compact mode because it's way more clear and you're easily able to categorize your different swatches. You can only have the ones you're using open and then the rest close, but you know where they are. Um, and then there's these, you know, yeah. That's really about it for, uh, for swatches. Hopefully next week, or even before that, I will have an extension review for the Colorus extension from the same team. They claim themselves, and I can see that, that the, both of those extensions work really well together in a workflow, and I can believe that. So I'll hopefully have that review out next week. It might feature some more swatches, depending on how I decide to make the extension showcase. So yeah, stay tuned. Make sure to subscribe, like the video, and of course, if you have any questions, if you have any questions, extension suggestions, or really just anything, feel free to ask me or just post a comment down below and I'll try to answer. YouTube has been a little bit finicky about letting me answer comments. I don't know why, but every now and then it's just can't deliver comment. It's annoying the hell out of me because I really want to answer you guys' comments. I don't want to seem like a guy who just ignores my content, but I just can't answer the comments and it's infuriating and it's just the quirks of YouTube, I guess. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, I'll see you guys next.